What's up Raiders, Bionic here with another Legendary Fusion video on Raid Shadow Legends. Perhaps you guys have seen the last one on the Foley Fusion, which is the other Legendary Champion I was able to fuse. This one will obviously be about Harvest Jack. So this video will explain to you guys how I was able, as a 100% free-to-play player, able to fuse this Legendary. Which in the end, only really cost me saved up resources. But just how much? To answer the question, we are going to look at my current resources and then I will take you guys back in time and look at where I was when the event started. As of now, I have 1890 gems and 26 million silver. My current shard count is 586 and I did not touch any of the other shards. Next up, we will look at the bruise, which I have over 90 of each. And I can tell you guys that I've had to use plenty of those. And finally, here is my potion count. I will say that I did have to farm some of them, especially the arcane potions, because I ran out trying to ascend the rank 5 champions. So that's a quick snapshot of my resources, but I will also point out that I did have some of the champions needed for the fusion. And I will also mention that as you can see, Harvest Jack is already partially leveled as well as partially ascended, but those potions were farmed yesterday, which was the day after I actually got Harvest Jack. Okay, and now we are going to go back in time and look at my progress. Okay, so if I recall correctly, the day the Harvest Jack fusion went live was actually the day I was finishing the Dragon Stage 20 mission. And I had just finished the Ice Golem mission as well, which was a total of an extra 300 gems. So as you can see from this screenshot, I went from 2,503 gems to 2,817 gems. I should also point out that unlike the Foley Fusion, Plarium did a very good job on this one as to advising us as the upcoming events and where we could get each of the champions required for the fusion itself. So having a plan laid out for us, I simply followed the series of events. First we had a Dungeon Divers event, which was easily completed by doing the Dragon Stage level 20. And all I really needed from this event was the Madman because I already had Mother Superior. And then we had the Champion Training Tournament, which also gave me one of the champions I was missing. Conveniently, we also had the Champion Training Event, so this is another great job by Plarium for putting both of them at the same time. But to be 100% transparent, I was only missing Madman, Runic Warder, and Steadfast Marshal. And you guys should also know that I had most of the potions needed to ascend all these champions. I should also mention that by now I had already used quite a lot of brews and mystery shards. Unfortunately I forgot to take a before picture of that but I can tell you guys right away that it was well above 150 uh, for each of the potions that I had on hand and as you saw in the beginning I ended up finishing with about 90 of each. And as for the mystery shards, I'm pretty sure I had about 800 or 900 when I started out and finished with uh, roughly 500. In the last day or two, I obviously got a couple more, which is why you saw, I think, 586 in the beginning of the video. Anyway, by now, I was almost 100% certain that I was going to get Harvest Jack. My only concern was, was I able to get Sway Firstborn within those 10 days of the champion training event? Which means I had to consider getting her through the champion chase tournament but with the very limited amount of shards that i had available it was not a guarantee that i was going to get her or if it was it would have been extremely tight i would have had to use literally every last shard so i stuck to the plan and by the 10th day i was down quite a lot on my gems quite a lot on my shards and decided i was going to get her through the champion training event which ended up being very rewarding because the event itself had a lot to offer so, a day or two later, several hundred gems later, and a convenient compensation by Plarium, which gave me another double XP boost, I finally was able to get her. With the final piece of the puzzle on hand, and being at an all-time low on my gem count, I finally had everything it took to do the fusion. At this point, I was very excited, decided to use a couple of extra brews to level up Sway Firstborn as quickly as possible. And since for this event, I did not even purchase one double XP buff, I actually got one when I started the event. I got one throughout the event, and I had my weekly, and I believe that then we got the one from, right, the compensation from Plarium. But what I did do is use this strategy right here, which is to maximize the 24-hour double XP window by condensing three days into one. 
So for this to work, what you need to do is to make sure you have full energy right before the day is about to reset. At that point, you want to grab the 60 minute playtime reward as well as the daily quest reward and then wait about an hour and a half before starting the 24 hour double XP buff. And now you can start using all that saved up energy, as well as the following day's energy, which will include the overnight regeneration, the regeneration from the day itself, the daily quest from that day, the weekly quest if you have them, monthly quest if you have it as well. After that, you're going to hit the third day's reset and you will have one hour and a half to use the daily uh, playtime reward as well as the daily, daily quest regeneration. So, finally, in the end, having used probably about 1200 gems, maybe 60 or 70 so potions of each of the affinity types and probably four or 500 mystery shards, I was finally able to fuse Harvest Jack. But... The real question is, was it really necessary? And I say this mainly because I'm just about at the end game. I almost am done with all the level 20 dungeons. I am on the Nightmare Clan boss. I'm in gold tier 4. So you have to wonder, did I really need this champion? And the answer is probably not. However, I did want to do the challenge anyway. Going on almost 9 months as a 100% free to play player, I have to wonder what else am I going to do with my resources. And finally, I wanted to prove to you guys that yes, it is possible once again to complete the legendary fusion events. And if I recall correctly, we so far have had 5 throughout the year. I've only been able to complete two of them as a free-to-play player. So, I want to know what you guys think. Are these legendary fusions even worth it? Do you even try? Do you partially do it or not at all? On that note, I will let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this kind of guide recap of how I've been able to complete the fusion. As always, please do not forget to check the description to see how you can support my channel. Later, guys.